I would like to share a quote that uh, Franklin Graham wrote about the Bible. So we're going to be studying this book, but before we do, I would like to read something that he was writ uh, written when he was still a little boy. And the, the quote goes as follows. The Bible reveals the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts binding, its his histories are true, its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's war, uh, sword, the Christian's character. Here paradise is restored, heaven opened, the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is the grand object, our, our good is its design. The goal, the glory of God is its end. It should fill your memory, rule your heart, guide your feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is given in life, will be opened in judgment, and will be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, will reward the greater, greatest labor, and will condemn all those who strive for, uh, with it. So we, we know that Franklin Graham, he, he did not always follow the Lord, but th this was written to him when he was still before he even became a, uh, a, save, a saved, before he became a Christian. And those words, they really spoke to him because we have the book. The book that we're going to be reading from is exactly what we just, uh, we heard in this wonderful quote. A lot of people talk about the Bible and it's great to, to hold the Bible, but right now let's open the Bible and see what God wants to speak to us personally to see what, what we need to change in our life and wh uh, where we can grow in our relationship with, with Christ. So we've been uh, studying the letter of Philippians. Uh, as God allows, we've been going through the first chapter. So if you, if you could, let's open up the first chapter of Philippians. We'll be reading verses 22 through 26. It's been a while since we looked at this, but last time we studied the verse that, is, that I think every single Christian should live by. It says, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And those were the verses we studied last time. And immediately following this, these great words, we read the following from verse 22. Apostle Paul says, but if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor Yet what I shall choose I cannot tell, for I am hard-pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And being confident of this, I know that I shall remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy of faith, that your rejoicing for me may be more abound abundant in Jesus Christ by my coming to you again. If you read this at first glance, we might say, well, what can we really glean from this and take to our hearts? But this passage really fills the heart. Uh, Apostle Paul opens up his heart, and he has the greatest dilemma that any person could uh, possibly have. It's the dilemma to be in the presence of Christ in eternity or to be here on earth where he is constantly being beaten, he has uh, experienced so much persecution, torture, prison, he's being cold in the dungeons, he is, he's been half uh, dead because he was beaten so many times, yet he says, I have a desire to be with you, because to remain here because I know it is more needful for you. So the title of my message today is, our desires versus our needs. So the, the passage we read can be divided basically in two sections. So the first section talks about his desires. In verse uh, 23 it says, I have the desire to depart. And then the second part talks about the need. He says, but there is a great need for the church to be edified 
and the church to be spiritually uh, fed and to grow into maturity. So in this uh, letter a little bit earlier, we already talked about the joy that Apostle Paul has regardless of his circumstances. So t Apostle Paul talked about being joyful regardless of troubles in verse 12. He talked about being joyful regardless of the wrong motives when sometimes people, they, have, they preach Christ from the wrong motives. And he said, even, even if they preach from the wrong motives, as long as Christ is glorified, I am happy. I rejoice in that. And then he talked about joy regardless of facing death. And we talked about that last time. And today we're going to talk about joy while remaining in the flesh. Everything in his body say, uh, he was saying, I want to be with Christ in heaven, but I, want, I will rather remain here if that is more necessary. This is more needful for you. Paul did not know what to choose, and he did not make the choice. He did not, not say, I want to I wanna go to the Lord. He said I, he totally trusted this decision into the hands of God because God is the sovereign Lord of the universe, and we should always trust him. And this should be the most comforting doctrine to the Christian. Because if I trust God, then I know he knows best for me. Because he is the loving father. He is the loving, uh, all-knowing, uh, all-powerful God of the universe. He knows what's best for me. Because sometimes as a person in the flesh, I do not want to be sick at a certain moment in my life. But God knows what's best for me. I would never choose to suffer in the flesh, but God knows that maybe sometimes suffering would be better for me. That's why to trust God, that's the greatest uh, comfort to the Christian, to trust in the sovereignty of God, that he knows what's best for each one, because he is the loving Father. So two, two points I would like to share with us before we pray together. The first point is the desire to be with Christ is, very, is a very good desire. The desire to be with Christ is good. There's nothing wrong with the desire he has to depart and be in eternity with Christ because he knows the contrast he had when he was persecuting Jesus to the point where he saw him in Damascus and was completely transformed. He knows who Christ is and he wants to be with that Christ. So Paul has a very strong desire to be with Christ and at the same time he has a very strong desire to serve the church. And that's the only two things that move Apostle Paul, and, and, and if we break it down, it should be what moves every single Christian, because if we love God, if we love Jesus Christ, then we would want to be with him, but at the same time, while he gives us life here on earth, it might be, we might live a few more years, or we might live to be a good old age. The time that God gives is the time that we should de devote and dedicate to saving the lost and to building up the church. That's what was Paul's greatest desire and sadly a lot of Christians do not live this way most Christians are happy to say yes I love Jesus but they say yes I want to have Jesus but at the same time I want to have uh, something else Paul did not say I want to I want to be with Christ but I still want to become an old man and live in a peaceful island somewhere on the beach he did not say that his strongest desire was to serve Christ and even if it was to die, he was willing to do that. Most Christians say, I want to be with Christ, but I have a strong desire to start a family, to do a lot of good things. And that, there's nothing wrong with that. That is a normal, normal part of life. And we should do that. And we should study and we should go to college and have a good job. But that should not be the main desire of our heart. Our main desire should always be to do, see what I can do for the Lord so that the church can grow. So what gave Paul such a strong desire to be with Christ? If we look at his life, we, I already mentioned that he experienced Jesus Christ personally at the road to Damascus. Before that, he was persecuting Christ. And when he met him, he saw the glory of the light of Jesus Christ. He was instantly transformed. He was radically transformed from a persecutor to one that spreads the gospel to the whole world. And that was his greatest, greatest ministry. That was the first thing. And the second thing was, remember that time that when Apostle Paul had a glimpse of what heaven would be like? 
He was such a unique person that God used that he, remember if you look at 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2 through 4, it talks about, he says, I don't know if it was in the flesh or not, but I saw glory, the glory of heaven. And let, let's just read this passage together. We'll, we'll see one of the reasons why Apostle Paul had such a great desire to be with Christ was, it was not just because it will relieve his uh, physical pain here on earth, but it's because the great glory of heaven is so much greater than anything we could ever experience here. Second Corinthians 12, 2 says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Such a man was caught up to the third heaven, and I know such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows how he was caught up into, the, into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Inexpressible words. Apostle Paul never wrote about it to try to exp explain what, heaven, what he saw in heaven because it was something that could not be described with words. But he saw it, he knew it, and that's what was his longing. And we could say, well, this was just Apostle Paul. He was the one unique person in history who had such a glorious uh, revelation of heaven. That's why he wanted to be with him. But we did not, though we did not see Christ, we know the glories of heaven because Scripture reveals to us how glorious God is and, and Jesus Christ who died for us. So what does Paul mean when he says to live in the flesh? We just read here in verse 22, but if I live on in the flesh, does this mean, like sometimes we know he talks about if you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you live according to the spirit, you will live. This is not what Apostle talks, Paul talks about. He's not saying it in a sinful way. He's not saying I live in the flesh sinfully. He's just referring to the body. He is a uh, uh, Currently, he's alive. When he was writing this um, passage, he was still alive. He was in the body. That's what he means the, in his flesh. So he's not saying as in a sinful way, but he was writing from the flesh. And the, the time that God gives us in the flesh is the, the, the only time we could impact uh, people around us. And whatever we do here it will be, go with us into eternity. And that's why it is so important to use the time we have wisely. And that's what Apostle Paul was striving for, to always bring glory to Christ. If we read Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Apostle Paul also talks uh, about this in a similar way. He uses different words, but he, he talks about being in the flesh and the glories of being with Christ. Uh, that's Galatians 2, 20. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I live in the flesh. So he was still in the flesh at that moment. He wasn't living according to the flesh, but he was in the flesh. And he wanted to live it according to Christ. According to the will of God. And, and then it says, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself to me. Paul is referring to the physical state of being in the flesh. And Paul's desire was to bear fruit. The only reason he wanted to remain in the flesh was not to live a self-centered life, but to bring more fruit to, to the glory of God, Christ because he knows that when he gets to heaven, it will be rewarded because it was what his greatest desire was to bring glory to God. Paul was not worried that if he dies, that the church will cease to exist. He's not saying, oh, if I die, then the church, nobody will be able to teach the church. That's not what he's saying. He's not approaching it from a, uh, from a very a prideful way. He's humbling himself and saying, I would rather do what is not, um, his first desire was to be with Christ, but he said, I would rather do what is second best and remain here because it's more needful for you. Because it's more needful to edify the church. So the first thing we looked at is the desire. The desire was very good to be with Christ. Now let's look at the second point, which is the need. The need to choose what's best for others. 
Secondly, the need to choose what's best for others is more important than to choose what is best for me at the moment. And we see that in verses 24 through 26. He says, Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. So here we see that the desires of Paul were, in a way, canceled out by the need. He saw that the need of the church was more important than his desire to even be with Christ. So there is a strong desire to see Christ, but also to, to see the church, uh, to, be, to serve the church is more needed at the moment. So the desire I have to see him is what, motiv- uh, the desire to see Christ is what motivates us and it's what motivated Paul at that time to serve Jesus Christ. To serve the church who is so desperately needs the love and care that we have. And that is what I think every Christian should have this desire. While God is giving me the time in the flesh, I should use it for the glory of God and not use it for my own needs. We know that the scripture teaches that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And the Apostle Paul knew that as soon as he would leave this earthly body, he would be in the presence of God. He wouldn't, there wouldn't be some kind of soul sleep or some kind of moment uh, when, where he has to wait until the final resurrection. He knew that if he dies, he will be with the Lord. And he wanted to leave this earthly tent, as he calls it oftentimes, the body, the tent, to go into the Father's house. This is a similar uh, situation where the Israelites were in the desert. They had a tabernacle. It was a temporary tent. They moved around a lot. So it would be like if they put the tent up in in the desert and then they start planting trees around and start building nice permanent houses. Well, they know that in maybe a a month or a year that they will need to move. So they did not said that as a permanent place. That's what Apostle Paul is saying. It's just a tent, a temporary place for us to dwell because the permanent living is in heaven with Jesus Christ. The gospel will make you put the needs, your needs over your desires because a lot of times we do what we desire but if somebody's needs are more important than we oftentimes override that and say, I will do what is more important, what is needed. And that's what a lot of missionaries do all over the world. They, they have a desire to live comfortably like we do here, to have, live by their families, their children, by their grandparents, by a nice church, and just be comfortable. But they, they see that there's a need. There's a need of those people that are dying without Christ, so they leave the comfort of their homes and go live somewhere in a totally different place without the comforts that we have today. So I have a desire to be with Christ, that's what Apostle Paul says, but the need is far greater than my desire. Now let, let's look at this in our, in our relationship uh, to ourselves personally. Let's apply this to ourselves, the desire versus the need idea. So today we have an evening service. Uh, maybe I did not have a desire to come to an evening service, but I know the need is very great because even we understand, oh, maybe I don't have a desire, but the need, even if you do not uh, actively participate in the church, just by being there, you learn from the scriptures. You learn, you sing together, you have fellowship. So the desire Cannot, if you have a desire that doesn't, you do not want to go to the evening service, that doesn't mean that it's not good for you because we know the need overrides the desires. And then we say, okay, I will still go and I will serve the Lord. It is needful for the body of Christ that you use your talents for his glory. In, in another instance, Apostle Paul even says, if it is needful for somebody to be saved, I am willing to become a vegetarian. I am willing to uh, get rid of my desires to eat uh, good meat like everybody else does. I will not eat meat so that somebody that needs to be saved, so they can be saved. 
For me personally, that would be a really big sacrifice to say, I will not eat something like meat for the rest of my life because I want to see one person saved. But that was the heart of Apostle Paul. He was willing to say, the need for that one person to be saved is greater than me eating what I desire all the time. Next I wanted to talk about was that Paul wanted to do what Paul wanted to do what was best for the church not his own desires. Paul says to put others needs ahead of his own and he talks about that in the next chapter also chapter 2 verse 4. He he says a similar idea. He says let each of you look out not only for his own interests but also for the interests of others. So in a way, Apostle Paul was saying, my, need, my interests are, I, I would rather be with Christ because it's so much better, but because there's such a great need, I will remain in the flesh. I will serve as long as God allows me to. For Paul, it would have been much easier to say, I would rather be with the Lord. But he said, I would rather I choose to serve because God, if God gives me this time, maybe a year or two or three, I will use it to his glory. We know that the Philippian church needed Apostle Paul just like all the other churches still needed him because Apostle Paul, in the end, he was released for a short time. He was released and he was able to still uh, for maybe two or three years, we're not sure the exact time, but he was able to do so much in that short period of time because he knew his numbers, the days were numbered, so he did everything he possibly could to spread the gospel. And we know that even in this letter, even though it's, a lot of it is talking about joy and how great it is to walk in fellowship with Christ, we know that this church, even in Philippi, had problems that, they, that Paul helped them address, like the humility that they had, that they need to be like Christ Jesus. And in the next chapter, it talks about beware of dogs and beware of the, those that do not, um, those evildoers. He said, beware of that. Now, if we look at an example from the Old Testament to kind of compare this to what we're talking about with Paul, an idea, a person that came to my mind was Hezekiah, the king, Ezekiah. He was a king of Judah, and he was a very good king in the beginning. He did a lot of good, but we know the story. He was told that he only has about, he, he had a little short while left, and he will die. And God said, prepare your house, you will die. And, and this is where the difference is with Apostle Paul and Hezekiah. Hezekiah did not want to die, not because he had a desire to be with Christ or, or to serve uh, the people. He, he just did not want to die because he was not ready to die. And, and then he wept. And then we read 2 Kings 20, verse 5. It says, I have heard, God speaks, I have heard your prayer I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add to your days 15 years. So God was merciful to Hezekiah, and he gave him this 15 years. But the question is, what did Hezekiah do with those 15 years? Apostle Paul, he, he knew he had a short time, and he did so much in just two years, but Hezekiah, in 15 years, he... It seems like if God told you, you only have 15 years left, how would we live? How, would I live any different today if God spoke to me and said, you have exactly 15 years to live? Would you live any differently? Would I live differently? Hezekiah, he, he did something. He started doing things that were unpleasing to the Lord. He showed the Babylonians the whole temple and everything in Jerusalem, and it was destroyed because of that. And his son Manasseh was born in this time. He was the most wicked king of Judah that was ever before him. So if God would give us even 15 years, would we live any different? That's a question that we could look. Apostle Paul knew that even if God would give me, it would take me today, I would praise him. If he gives me 15 years, I will live every single moment to his glory. And we know that eventually Paul would die, and he did die. 
But the words that he left to the Philippian church and to those that he, the letters that he wrote after this moment when he was released, we still read them today and we take great comfort in knowing that the Apostle Paul wrote the scripture and we read it as holy inspired word of God today and it comforts us. And we know that Apostle Paul, his greatest desire was to see the progress of the joy of faith. So the progress in their faith, he wanted them to grow. It was not for any carnal reason. Apostle Paul received joy from seeing the church grow in the, jo in the joy of faith. The last scripture I would like to read before we pray is uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 8 and 9. And here it talks about us not being able to see Christ. Like Apostle Paul, he did see Christ, and he did see heaven. But for us, we do not see it, but we believe it because it is written in this great, wonderful book of which we're reading from. And if we trust it and believe it in faith, we will also have the same joy that Apostle Paul had. It says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. We do not see him physically, but we know him. We know that he is because he's revealed himself in the scriptures, and that should bring us comfort and joy. And so we could say with Apostle Paul, we, we want to be with Christ, but meanwhile, why are we still Still here on the flesh, we should serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, Apostle Paul says, I don't care if I am in chains or if I am suffering, if I am in pain, as long as the gospel is being preached and as long as Christ is being glorified and his name is being magnified, I, am, I take pleasure in that and I will, be, I will take joy in that. So dear friends, let, let us cherish the time that we have as long as we are alive, because only this time we can serve the Lord. We, we, we can't do anything for him once we're dead in the flesh. We will be with him, but only here while we are alive and remaining, we can serve the Lord, we can serve the local church, we can serve each other, we can help spread the good news across the, first of all, State College, and then the whole United States and across the world. May the name of the Lord be glorified. Let's pray together. Amen.